Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Healthy Emmy. I'm the creator of the Slim on Starch program and here are my three go-to meals that I eat pretty much every day. Woo! Back it up and let's begin. You're gonna see me do this probably a hundred times today because these tend to go like that and then my midriff shows and that's just not a great look. So I'm gonna keep doing this and we're just gonna deal with it. First up, we have got what I eat for meal number one most days and meal number maybe three or four or maybe my last meal of the day. It doesn't really matter. There are gonna be cats in the background of this video. It's just, we're rolling with it. It is oatmeal. Now, you can use any type of oats that you enjoy. I personally love the instant oats because they are quick, they are easy. If I go to a restaurant and they have steel cut oats, I am like, honey, I'm living like a queen today, but your girl doesn't have time for steel cut oats. People often ask me which oats are the best oats to eat, and I always say the best oats to eat are the ones that you truly enjoy because I want this to be sustainable in the long term. I don't want this to be just another crash diet, so don't worry if you're doing steel cut or if you're doing rolled or instant. Whatever you truly enjoy, have that so that this is sustainable in the long term for you. So I'm doing right here for the sake of this video, a half a cup of oats. You could do a half a cup, you could do a full cup of whatever you feel most comfortable with. Please do not compare the quantities of what I'm eating to what you are eating. We are all individuals. So I have a half a cup of oats. I'm going to mix this with one cup of water. You could use plant milk if you wanted to. I just go for water. I think it tastes just fine. All right, now I'm gonna pop this baby into the microwave. I do recommend microwaving it before you put the fixins in there. If you put some spices or some fruit into the oatmeal before it goes into the microwave, then you tend to lose the spice. You wanna add the spices and the toppings at the end so that they taste the freshest. So into the microwave for three minutes we go. While that is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on what I'm gonna put on top of the oatmeal. And one of the things that I'm gonna put on is this banana. And you might say, Emmy, that is the grossest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. But I'm about to prove you wrong because if we start to open this here banana, what we'll see is that it's absolutely fine and it's actually perfectly ripe. I don't recommend eating bananas before they get their freckles. Before they get freckles, they're really, really tough to eat and they're resistant starches and they don't digest too well, but these will digest very easily. So I'm gonna take about a half a banana. I'm not a huge chunky banana kind of gal. Like I will, if you, if I am ever eating a banana just straight up as is, give me a call because something is not right. I do not like bananas just as is. I like my bananas mashed up in oatmeal. So I'm gonna coin this guy up. And the reason I do a half a banana is just because like I said, I don't love the bananas themselves. I just like the taste of the banana and the oatmeal. Something else that I'm going to be adding to this is good old flaxseed. This is ground flaxseed, and if I'm being honest, the most optimal way to do this is to grind the flaxseed fresh, but your girl doesn't do that, and I'm not a perfect human. My flaxseed is pre-ground, sue me, but I put about a tablespoon of flaxseed onto my oatmeal to ensure that I'm getting all the omega-3s that I need. I know that a lot of people worry about getting enough fat on a whole foods plant-based diet but if you just hike up your jeans like this and you make sure that you add a tablespoon of flaxseed to your oats then you should be all good and you could add it to anything really alrighty I caught that in the nick of time that was about to boil over I got hot eyes on it here we are with my oats and my midriff I'm gonna take my banana I'm gonna take my flaxseed out on there. And I always add cinnamon. I just love cinnamon. Cinnamon is always a good idea. I do about a fourth a teaspoon. I think it adds the perfect amount. And there we have it, folks. Here it is, my oatmeal. I love to eat this not just, you know, I don't subscribe to the idea of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I just think you should eat when you're hungry and stop when you've had enough and you can eat anything at any time of day. All the meals that I'm showing you today, you could eat at whatever time of day you wanted to. This doesn't necessarily have to be a breakfast food. I like to eat this before I'm about to go out or if I'm about to go to a restaurant. If I have a lot going on, 
I like to put the oatmeal into the good old body. And if I know I'm about to be out on the town, it's nice because it contains beta-glucan, which makes you feel very full without feeling like you have this big stomach full of vegetables. So I love oatmeal because it makes you feel super satisfied. You don't feel like you've eaten too much. It's just the bell of the ball. So yes, you will catch me dead with oatmeal. So I'm gonna put this over here and we're gonna move on to the next thing that I am always eating. All right, next, one of my favorite veggies of all time, the Brussels sprout. I just, I mean, Lord help my significant other when he moves into this home because it smells like Brussels sprouts quite often and I'm not sorry about it. So I got these frozen Brussels sprouts from Whole Foods because the frozen ones tend to be cheaper than the fresh ones. And they're super easy because you don't have to chop them. So when you buy fresh Brussels sprouts, you do have to do a lot of the, you know, chop the butt off of them. But when you buy the frozen ones, they're all good to go. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put them into my microwave steamer. This microwave steamer is probably one of the best purchases I've made in my 26 and a half years. I'm actually gonna be 27 next month. And it's still one of the best purchases that I've made in my nearly 27 years. I will link this, actually this is linked in the down part. You'll see there's, in the description bar, you'll see Emmy's go-to products. It's linked there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this open, pour it in the steamer, I'm gonna fill this up with water. Excuse me, excuse me, thank you. I'm gonna put this on. And you guessed it, it goes into the microwave. Now, how long you cook it for depends on how cooked you like your vegetables. I like my vegetables so cooked, it's it's a bit concerning. So I'm gonna put it in there. I mean, honestly, I could put it in for like 20 minutes and that's not a joke, but I, you know, I got some football to watch today. So I'm gonna put this in for 10-ish minutes. I'll see you soon. To go with the vegetables, I am going to have one of the best things that nature ever gave us, which is the Hannah yam. Disclaimer, this Hannah yam is tiny. I used Amazon Whole Foods to get it, so I did not get to pick out the size of the Hannah yam. You're going to see me build a plate that is much smaller starch-wise than I would like to have. I would either have two this size or I would have one giant one, so this is a little bit small. but. The Hannah Yam tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios, and I'm not gonna back down on that stance. I'm very proud of that stance. I think it's a beautiful representation of this gorgeous Hannah Yam. And my little bear agrees, don't you? Yep, all right, you gotta go down. So how did I make this Hannah Yam? I poked holes in it and I put it on the oven rack directly at 375 for about an hour. I made sure to put some tin foil beneath because it does get a little bit gooey. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this baby open as so. Just open it up. Oh, I mean, come on. Is this not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? take some cinnamon. Actually, I'm gonna sprinkle cinnamon. So we're classy for the Hannah Yams. I'm gonna take some cinnamon, sprinkle it over, and then when my Brussels sprouts are done in about 10 years, I'm gonna add in the Brussies. This is so satisfying. The dark green vegetables contain something called thylakoids. Thylakoids shut off the hunger signal. They're gonna prevent you from having cravings. So if you find that you're having cravings throughout the day, start off your day with green vegetables. I would absolutely no doubt eat this for meal number one. I would eat this for every single meal of my life if we're being completely honest and be totally content. And I kind of do if we're being on, I mean, on the page of honesty, I eat this all the time and I find this totally satisfying. I like things simple, I like things easy, and this is simple and easy. Alrighty, the Brussels are ready. So. We're gonna take our brussies. Just gonna, oh, they smell so good. People say that they smell not good. I disagree wholeheartedly. I'm just gonna place these around. My beautiful, gorgeous potato. I mean, this is, oh, it's so delicious. And if you're really feeling frisky, you can get a bite of brussies and a bite of potato in one. You're not living unless you're doing that. So again, under normal circumstances, I have a larger potato or I have a second potato, but I don't have that in the house at this moment. There we go. Simple, easy, quick. If you haven't begun to pick up on it, I like things to be really simple 
really easy. I don't wanna have to be in the kitchen for hours and hours, so I really do eat this simply because there are other things that I want to do. Some people really love to be in the kitchen and create these elaborate recipes, and that is wonderful for them. I'm just not that person. There are other things that I wanna do, and so I like things to be quick and simple and easy, and this truly is the way that I eat. So, there we go. Ooh. Almost dropped that. Here we are. They're so good, I just can't even handle it. Okay, this is going next to the oatmeal. All right, babies, let's do it. Meal number three. All right, for number three, we are going to be having tacos. Starting with some corn tortillas. Now, corn tortillas, you're going to want to make sure that the only ingredients are corn, water, and lime, and salt. You just want to make sure that there's not any oil added. Sometimes they'll advertise corn tortillas as corn tortillas when really they're flour tortillas that have a little bit of corn in them. So always look at the ingredients and just make sure that they're made from corn, water, maybe lime, they might not have lime added, but corn, water, and salt. So that is what I've got here with my corn tortillas. I am in weight maintenance, so tortillas are fine to have. If you are looking to lose weight, you might wanna have this just over rice or over corn itself. Then I'm going to take some peppers. These peppers are actually left over. If you saw my dinner party video, when I had my family over for dinner, I roasted up these peppers. And the way that I did it was in the oven. I just, geez Louise. <gasps> I cut up some bell pepper strips and I roasted them with balsamic vinegar in the oven at about 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. You also could water saute these over a skillet, but these are just leftover from the dinner party, which super easy. You could batch cook all of these peppers at the beginning of the week and do what I'm about to do here, which is to lay them on the tacos. All right, then I'm going to take some black beans. Canned beans are totally fine. I get asked about that quite often, if canned beans are okay. Honey, you think I'm gonna be making beans from fresh in the kitchen? Ha! Then you are not on the right channel if you're looking for that, trust me. If you are looking for somebody who's gonna make beans from scratch when you could just buy them from a can, you got the wrong YouTube channel. So I'm gonna take these canned beans, dollar store can opener. Anything from a can is fine. Just look at the ingredients. Canned vegetables, fine. Canned beans, fine. I'm gonna rinse these. I am using this measuring, excuse me, sir. I'm using this measuring cup, not because I'm measuring, just because I didn't want to bring my colander over here and get water everywhere. So now I'm taking black beans and I'm adding these into the tacos. Beauteous. Now I'm gonna take some salsa. Salsa does have salt in it. I don't really care about salt. I think salt is fine to have unless you have high blood pressure or if you struggle with binge eating or if you're not losing weight while eating whole foods plant-based, then be careful with the salt. But I'm just fine with having salt as part of my repertoire and I'll use any salt because oh, salt, <laughs> salsa. I'll use any salsa because pretty much all salsas are the same. You know, I'm not purposefully measuring this with a tablespoon. It's just what I'm using to scoop this out here. I do not weigh and measure. And I'll have way more than three tacos if we're being, if we're being real here. And voy a tener lechuga. I'm gonna have some lettuce. Just rip some off. I mean, the culinary skills are, it's just too much, right? Just tearing some off with my hand. How beautiful is this? Sometimes I amaze myself. All right, there we go. Bada bing, bada bang, baby. There's meal number three. I suppose I should take a nice photo with all of my meals, right? Look how beautiful. I love tacos. If you are still watching, comment tacos, because who doesn't love tacos? I love you, honeys, and I will see you the next time I have a taco. Woo!